NPD numbers are back again in the forefront of the gaming news sphere. And man, we got some big stuff to talk about. Also, Cyberpunk 2077 on Stadia is one of the premier places to play. What? Let's get into it. See as PlayStation 5 and Nintendo dominate NPDs while Cyberpunk on Stadia shocks game community. Let's go. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. Yes, we are back, baby. Different kind of format where we juggle a lot more gaming news to inform you as much as possible. But with all that said, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. And y'all know the slogan. We are not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right. So, uh, first, let's get into this whole MPD thing because you know MPD's been on the back burner. Shout out to the homie Matt Piscatella. Um, and then shout out to all of the analysts out there like Benji Sales and the homie Daniel Lamont that are breaking down all this stuff because Matt puts out a lot of plethora of nerd info. And that's, I love that type of stuff. But when you're looking for that quick hit, the summary of it, you know, you got Daniel Lamont, you got Benji Sales, they right there with you to, to break it all down for you. Okay, so let's take a look. Let me show you something. All right, you see that? See that little strip right there? Homie Daniel Mod, the aforementioned analyst. Um, and he's, he just summarizes what Matt Piscatella has here for the NPDs. Uh, let's break it down chunk by chunk. First chunk, PlayStation 5 had the biggest launch month for any console in the US beating the previous record holder, which was the PlayStation 4. Look, um, this is nothing short of miraculous. I mean, I myself doubted that the PlayStation 4, I doubted that any console would ever touch what the PlayStation 2 did. I thought that once we had the 360 generation, that we were gonna have a little bit more of a competitive front between Xbox and Nintendo, I mean, between Xbox and PlayStation, sprinkling some Nintendo, but Nintendo's in their own lane. We'll get to them in a little bit. And um, I thought that, you know what I'm saying, the Apex would be, you know, each each of those two, whatever units they had, the, the combined sales, when you look at mid-gen refreshes or whatever the case may be, different versions, different SKUs, that, you know, you're looking at anywhere between 80 to 90 million. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it, it, anywhere between 80 to 100 million if the population grows significantly enough, right? Um, I, I never thought that you would ever see these gaps ever again. You know, PlayStation is a juggernaut, and even though they were having play problems with the PlayStation 3, even at its lowest point, they were still running neck and neck with Xbox, okay? And Xbox likely understood, I felt at that point in time, that they had to be running on all full cylinders, so they wouldn't be slowing down their pace. They would be continuing to bring out the juggernaut games, the Western developed games, the nuanced games, the Bioshocks, the Mass Effects, the Jade Empires, and stuff like that, right? wrong you know what i'm saying xbox dropped the ball changed regimes as i feel maybe dropped the ball a little bit more and playstation ran away with it but again i never would have thunk i would have never thunk in a million years that even though xbox had dropped the ball that they would still get out pace like they like somewhere in the realm of the og xbox go i mean what they did do is well, no, they didn't even do that. Now that I think about it, I was going to say they did like kind of at least have the combination of sales of the Xbox, of the OG Xbox and, and, and the GameCube. But still, man, it's, whew. It, I mean, the gap is, is phenomenal and, and, and Xbox, I mean, the PlayStation just blew it away and they're outpacing the PlayStation 4. I mean, they, uh, they, they outpaced the PlayStation 2 with the PlayStation 4. Now we roll forward to the PlayStation 5. And now you're telling me that the PlayStation 5, when the, 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 when the PlayStation 4 ain't even, ain't even going to coffin yet. It's not, the body's not even cold. That they already started off outpacing the PlayStation 4? That beat the juggernaut, the PlayStation 2? That's all pacing the PlayStation 2? Ah, oh, this is too much for me to fathom, man. Crazy, crazy. So kudos to PlayStation. They know how to market. They know that it's important to have 
you know, some high impact games at launch, even though the whole we believe in generations thing, even though that fizzled and that, you know, was like egg on the face, they still kept it strong with focusing on AAA content for the most part. And, you know, it shows in the reputation and it's strong. It shows in the game awards. That'll be a separate video when I talk about all of the game awards, but you know, they solely just own the game awards. You know what I mean? It's just the reputation is strong. All right. Next little chunk it of information right here. All that stuff that I said about the PlayStation 5 is not to overshadow the fact that I think it's 24, 25 plus. I don't know. But either at two years or getting running up on two years or around two years, the Switch has dominated NPDs and units sold. Now, PlayStation 5 sold the record as far as uh, bringing in revenue. But the Switch killed it in units sold. They sold more Switches than more PlayStation 5s were sold or more Xboxes were sold. And that is a phenomenon. <laughs> they beat out everything. Woo, they beat out the PlayStation or the fours and the fives, the Xbox ones and the Xbox series. They beat them all out to be the most selling unit in the month of November, which is a big month, the biggest month to date, according to MPD for the year of 2020. Uh, say what you want about the Switch. It is not a kid's toy. Um, there was a report that just recently came out that the average Switch owner or no, not the app, but 60% um, of Switch owners are from the age of 18 to 40. Yep, that's true. So, um, and the other demographics are broken up in the other 40%. So, it's not a kid's toy. The lane that Nintendo has carved out for themselves has really been a fantastic thing to witness. Um, and the combination of its portability along with the, the, the caliber of games that they bring first party wise, um, it just has Nintendo running strong and, and it's going to be hard to outpace them in, in unit sales. Uh, even with these new consoles, it's going to be a challenge. You know what I mean? So kudos to them for all that. And definitely, definitely something that we're going to keep our eye on. Now, here goes the last little piece of junket from, from this space, uh, the Xbox. <laughs> um, the last note is that the Xbox, the Series X and S debut lower than the Xbox One. Okay. So, let's talk about the Series S first. Um, now, I get it that they still sold out. But I don't want to hear that trash. I don't want to hear it. Even though I get it, I don't want to hear it. Because both PlayStation and Xbox had supply shortages, quote unquote, because of COVID. Both were having yield problems that were higher than normal at launch, um, particularly with the PlayStation. But I find it hard, and I know that Xbox started its production later, but they were in 40 places, I think opposed to PlayStation 7. I could be reading this wrong. This is the, these are numbers that were thrown at me and they could be wrong. But nonetheless, I find it hard because I'm hearing that there are places in the United States that can produce Xboxes. And I could, I was told that by someone from GameStop. You know what I mean? Uh, I could be wrong or whatever the case may be, but whatever. But regardless of the, the numbers and what the people at GameStop are saying, the fact of the matter is, is that Microsoft is a juggernaut financially. They're open up the checkbook. They were doing a whole bunch of stuff. I find it hard to believe that Xbox did not know or did not have an ability to reach more capacity if they really wanted to. That was the whole point of dropping the Xbox Series S in the first place, right? The Xbox Series S was designed to bring in people that normally wouldn't be involved in a console launch, the casual gamer, and bring them in at a reasonable price. 
So what I feel, which is common sense, is that Xbox and maybe even Sony did this a little bit too, resorted to the oldest trick in the book because they all do it. You undercut your supply to increase demand. Nintendo is notorious for doing this at launches. Xbox knew exactly how many consoles they people wanted. They knew that far more people wanted PlayStation 5s. PlayStation 5s or 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 you know cultural phenomenons right now. They got SNL skits and uh um what, what was that? Uh, I, uh, Marty and Morty, or Morty, or whatever the hell that cartoon is. Talking about PlayStation. I mean, it's a cultural phenomenon right now. Rick and Morty. Xbox is not there. They know that. So they made enough supply to get enough out there for them to do well. Undercutting, you know, the, 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 the demand a little bit, but they knew that they could not produce as many PlayStation, I mean, as many as PlayStation 5 out there because they would have made, they would have been made to look like fools. They know that Xboxes would have been sitting on shelves and people would have been taking pictures of those 24 seven. Xbox knew exactly what it was doing. And it was the, it's the oldest trick in the book. So it's like I predicted earlier in the year, I was trying to tell my comrades, nobody wanted to listen. Oh no, the, the new series S is going, you know what I'm saying? It's going to change the game. It's going to make things tighter in the US. Er, wrong. Er, I look, we can keep going through this and I'm not going to keep going through this. I spent the last three years trying to educate the community at looking at corporate bibble babble and looking past it and demanding better. If y'all still want to demand mediocre, demand mediocre. And I'm talking to my, my, my brethren in the Xbox community. Now, if you're happy with what you got, if you're totally happy, this is not for you. But for those that want better and just think better is coming because they said so, no. Part of the product that you're being sold is hope and promise. That's part of the product that you're being sold is hope and promise. And if you want more than hope and promise, you got to demand more than hope and promise. Xbox is always behind. Do you notice that? They're always behind in everything. Oh, we we produce less. Oh, we got to build. We, 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 we don't have the, the the manpower to, to, to build first party. So we got to, they're behind in everything. All of a sudden, once uh, Phil Spencer took over, now they're behind in everything. They're behind in everything. They always got to play catch up because they can still make a whole bunch of money, more money than they ever did, while not supplying you expeditiously with the things that you want. And if you want it to change, you got to speak up, okay? So again, for those that are happy, I know many people are happy. They could care less about this, but those people probably ain't even watching this if they haven't already left. But for those of you that really want more from Xbox and just were told it's coming so y'all believe it, y'all clicking your heels and twinkling your eyes, it's not coming until you demand it. They're not gonna do it. They're making money off of just giving you hopes and wishes. Why expect more? So that's all I gotta say about that. The last little piece about uh, of all this is kind of, you know, connected to all this. So shout out to the homie King's blood, right? Broadband bullies in the house, right? Broadband bullies to the death, baby. I had responded about this and said my little two cents about it, right? And I and I and I poked fun at the fact that you know it was supposed to be the PlayStation because of Bloomberg. Remember, it's supposed to be the PlayStation that had a lower demand and wasn't going to have enough units out there for the U.S. I'm just talking solely U.S. here. I'm coming to find out it was Xbox. Everything that they blame PlayStation for, it's always Xbox that's guilty of. It seems like to me. So I was talking about that, making poking fun at that into my homie King's blood because he knows I'm a Stadia guy, he says. Now Stadia sold zero units. So I said, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna take this time to mess with my brother King's blood, really bring him up into reality here because you know King's blood, he's in his PC master race bubble with his 3090 and his dual gigahertz processes, whatever the hell he buying up with all his money. You know what I'm saying? So 
I want to educate my brother though. I want I want to, I want him to see what we're doing on the other side. For those of us that may not be much as fortunate as, as my good brother King's blood, but still want a game in the same token. There's a lot more of us than there are of him. You know what I mean? He's a, he's the one percent. He's the mangy one percent. I said, you know what, King? Let's play devil advocate, bro. Maybe not. Maybe there weren't any soul. But they sure as hell, they as in Google, gave away enough TV units that they that, that, that the ish worked. As promised, yours is in the mail too. I ain't buying him nothing, man. <laughs> he, can, he can buy me a thousand. I ain't buying him nothing. Anyway, snippet number one. This is coming from The Verge, who has not in the past said kind things about Stadia. Or factual things, but we'll we'll, but we'll, 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 we'll say that for another time. Um, it may be hard to believe, but the Google Stadia version of Cyberpunk 2077 may be the best way to play for most players right now, unless you got like expensive hardware or you can access expensive hardware. Wow, that's coming from The Verge. In conjunction with all this, Stadia said, you know what, this is what we're gonna do. We get it that a lot of people wouldn't want to try our product on TVs. Most of the people that try our product right now do it on TVs. And that's courtesy of a of a, a poll that I we did at the Broadband Bullies. We showed that most of the Stadia gamers prefer to play on TVs per our poll, right? So they said, okay, well, how can we answer that problem? And they gave away free TV units, units that you need to play on a TV to anybody that pre-ordered Cyberpunk or buy Cyberpunk. See, we're going past pre-order. If you buy Cyberpunk on Stadia, they are going to ship you a TV bundle, CCU, and a controller so you can play on your TV. That's fantastic. Now, with that said, in order to play Stadia, you don't need this bundle to play it in general. You can play it on your laptop or your Android device. You can even play it on iOS, which isn't really officially supported, but it plays well from what I understand via a stop, uh, via an app called Stadium. All right. So in conjunction with what The Verge said, you got this thing going on right now that actually started a week or so ago. You got all these people. Now, this is a list of people that are playing. Let me see. Can I? Nah, they ain't gonna let me do that. I wanted to increase it. Can I? Nah, I ain't gonna let me do that. Dang, nabbit. This is a list of people just in one guy's friends list playing Stadia and playing Cyberpunk 2077. I think there's a lone guy in here playing Doom Eternal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And last but not least, <laughs> I had to give my brother King's blood the Shannon face. Like, Stadia's growing, baby. Whether y'all like it or not, it's growing. It's doing it solidly. Stadia, Google understands this thing called, uh, it's, it's a grassroots marketing process that they go through. That's how they market all of their products and that's how they've seen success. They do things a little bit different. Now, in the gaming world, the gaming was a little bit brutal. So, you know, it was very bumpy at first I'm trying this approach. But then they went at their own pace. They had their own uh, um, schedule of how they wanted to do things. They've done it and now it seems to be working. And this was an ingenious move because again, I, for the first time ever, I witnessed the Stadia platform buckle. And someone said, oh, that's crazy. No, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It lets you know that more people than Stadia anticipated were on the platform. It buckled. Mugs couldn't get in. It was crazy, and they came out and they was done. They was transparent. Look, it buckled. It was because of one game, and we love to see it. Just wait for a session to open up. It buckled, and they had to go run. I'm pretty sure go add more server blades and all other stuff. So with all this being said, y'all, the platform is just growing. It's growing silently. It's a little sneaky, little silent sly fox in the night. More people are enjoying it. More people that don't have the financial means or the ability to access expensive hardware. Those that don't want to deal with downloads just for the sheer convenience. They don't want to deal with downloads. Only got a few moments to play in spurts here and there. That want to play on the go. You know, this is a great advent for them. And it's great to see publications, even public, more importantly, publications that weren't kind of stated in the past. Acknowledge that for most people right now, 
that this might be the best way for you to play Cyberpunk 2077. Did you see the PlayStation 4 base and Xbox versions? Oh my God, ugly. And those are the most of the consoles that are out there now, y'all. We keep forgetting that. We talk all this stuff about these new next generation consoles. Those are the least amount of consoles that are out there. The most consoles that are out there are the ones that look like muck <laughs> with Cyberpunk 2077. So it's a big deal to see Stadia at least get that W. And with that said, that's it from your boy Mem2K. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with that said, I appreciate all of y'all. Thank y'all so much for y'all support on Stadia Dosage platform. Let's do it over here too, y'all. Broadband bullies in the house. Y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.